A title race unprecedented for its unpredictability. But one thing we do know for sure, it will be Liverpool or it will be City. Three games to go then in this Titanic title run-in where the standards have been so high. I actually don't think we've seen a title run-in as good as this one in the whole of the Premier League history. You know, teams that keep winning and winning and winning. It is the best Premier League season Liverpool have ever had. And yet, the fear exists that they are chasing the uncatchable. up next for Manchester City and they've got to wait a few days until their next Premier League game. It's against Leicester on Monday. Leicester of course are managed by the former Liverpool manager in Brendan Rodgers. I spoke to him only on Friday and asked him whether he'll be looking to do his old club a favour. People are asking can you do your old club Liverpool a favour in winning the title? Is there a part of you that would love to do that? My, my only focus, listen, Liverpool don't need my help. They've you know, they've had a great season. But they might need your help at the end of it, won't they? Well, I need to help Leicester. That's my, that's my focus, really, just to try and go there and uh, see if we can make it really, really difficult for them. And we know that we have pace in the team that can, that can give them a problem. Has Jurgen Klopp said anything to you? No. In the build-up to this game against City? No, nothing no, from him? No, nothing not at all. But he is your tenant, which I love. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's obviously taken your house in Liverpool. Yeah. Um, What's he like as a tenant? A good one? Or a yeah, he's one? very good. <laughs> he, he's a good guy. And what's your response to his uh, cheeky reply, which is that he might withhold rent if you don't do the business against <laughs> Manchester City? Well, no, he's always proven to be a very good tenant. So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's, he's a good guy. So that was his response to Jurgen Klopp jokingly telling the press last week that he will be withholding rent <laughs> from his landlord, uh, Brendan Rodgers, <clears throat> if he doesn't do him a favour against Manchester City. But... Can Leicester and Brendan play a big part for Liverpool here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're playing extremely well. And if you look at the way they... Vardy's back in form, scoring a lot of goals. It's nine in the last eight or something. Tiedemans is playing really, really well. Madison's playing really, really well. You think on the break, mm. they can cause an awful lot of problems for, for City. It's at the, uh, the Etihad, so you think, well, City must have the advantage. If it had been at the King Power, I think it might have been a bit different. I think I really would think that would be a very, very difficult fixture for City. But in saying that, I don't think Leicester will be easy to beat. No. Do you think they will actually drop points against I the Foxes? Don't, I don't. I don't think. I think City will win their last two games. I yeah. think Liverpool will win their last two games, and, and it will go down literally to a point. Then, yeah, yeah. and yeah. it will be again the, the the best title race we've ever had in English football, not just in Premier League era. I think mm. with the 1989, maybe Liverpool and Arsenal, yeah. it will be the best. Liverpool's confidence will be sky high after beating Huddersfield five 0 on Friday. Sadio Mane and both uh, Mohamed Salah got a couple of goals each. Jason, you were there. You said whatever happens now, Liverpool are storming towards the end of the season. The statistics are crazy. They've won ten in a row in all comps. It's their best run for 13 years, and yet they might still lose out to City. It is simply utterly incredible yeah. how these two brilliant teams have gone toe to toe and driven up the standards of this Premier League. It's it almost must be quite disheartening if you're a Liverpool player. And I know they're all trying to put a gloss on this and say, look, listen, we can't do any more. Yeah. But the fact that they can't do any more and still come second must be pretty demoralising in itself. I don't know. I mean, I think obviously they've got a Champions League semi-final as well. I don't know. I think you hope they just congratulate themselves on, on doing so well. You know, you, I, 
Klopp's been very interested in the way he's spoken about it. He's talked it up an awful lot, the achievement of just being where they are now, being so close, having done so well. And I think he's right to do that because you don't want to be demoralised because it might have a, a hangover next season if you are because you put so much effort into this season and, it, and you fall short by a point. But I, I think they've been excellent. I mean, you, you can't praise them more than, than, uh, than, than we have done because obviously... They made that title race when it was going to be a procession without them. You see, these are the highest points total to have ever won the Premier League crown. Yeah. And Liverpool already joined with United and Chelsea at the bottom on 91 points, with still two games to play. I, mean, you know, I saw that other statistic in that they've already got more points than the invincibles of Arsenal and the treble winning side, as we saw there, mm. of Manchester United. It's so many positives. And is that how you see it for them, as in they, they should never be negative about this season. Completely. I think I saw Sergio Mane after the game on Friday. Uh, I interviewed him, I was lucky to do that for French TV, and he was, I think he was really relaxed. And he, was really re and he said what Klopp has said a couple of weeks ago, this is our first goal at it. This, mm. is, the, this is our first goal. You know, you, you can't expect to maybe win mm. your, your, your title in the first time you're really properly in the title race against a team like City. Mm. If we don't win it this season, we're going to come again, you know, because we, that's what we're building towards. Anyway, if they win it this season, amazing. First try, first win, fantastic. Yeah. It might not always come the first time round and they would go again. Actually, that's a good point because if you consider where Liverpool were last time yeah. round when they're in this title winning situation, as it happens under Brendan Rodgers, there were still a few mitigating circumstances that meant that they might not go again the next season. Players were on their way out. They haven't got ageing players this time. They've got players in the peak of their form. What also helps, there's no summer major tournament no. for the players to be fatigued from in the uh, you know, next season. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that was an unexpected title uh, uh, challenge, challenge uh, three or four years ago. <coughs> Suarez was going to go. It was probably Gerrard's, well, well, it was Gerrard's yeah. last chance. It felt a little bit desperate. It was like, we've got to do it now if it doesn't happen now. And I think that desperation almost beat them in the end. Um, now it's different. I mean, it really is different. I mean, if, I say, they've made up this 25-point gap. You look at the profile of the team, the ages and so on. You've got other young players. They've done this with Alex Chamberlain. Gomez has been injured. Young yeah. players again coming in. <laughs> Alexander is only going to get better. The structure of the club, the recruitment of the club. Is, they're not going to have another big summer this summer. It's not going to be like last summer. But, no. they will, but there will be improvements. If they can keep the team together, which I think they probably will. I can't see anyone major going. Yeah. If they can keep the team together, there's no reason why they can't do this again. No reason at all. And that's a good point, because whenever a team is doing well, you never really hear of players wanting to leave or, you know, being linked with other big money signings. Is that what you're hearing as well from a European perspective, that no major incomings will be due at Anfield over the summer? Yeah, incoming or outcomings? Well, going in, going well, into Liverpool. Well, that's the thing. They can still invest. They still have a lot of money to, mm. if they want to, to invest. I just don't think they see... But where see... would they? If, uh, exactly. Any areas? Just, they see the Discord and think, we might need maybe a, a, a backup there for that position or minor... We need another forward. We need the forward maybe, line needs yeah. sorting out a little bit. You've got Origi, you've got Sturridge. Maybe you don't want either of those, so you might think we need somebody else. And yeah. Shakiri's kind of been okay. Mm. I think that that's the area probably they're looking at in terms of strengthening. So yeah. they can do that if they want to. For players leaving, there's no reason for any of them to think, you know, this, this grass could be greener anywhere else. We're into something so special here yeah. that we can win it all. And, yeah, of course, if Real Madrid come for Mo Salah or Virgil van Dijk, they might think twice about it. But Liverpool will close the door mm. for all their key players. Anyway, this summer, there will be no departure of major, major major players anyway yeah. so it's really something special but the thing is they have money if they want to yeah. to spend without having to sell which is obviously not always the case yeah and for only the fourth time as well from the same club we've got two players who've hit 20 goals talking of the front men uh, of course this time now <coughs> it's um uh, Mane and Salah and um, they're doing what um, Sturridge and Suarez last did um in the Liverpool shot it's funny you talk about meeting Sadio Mane I had the pleasure as well recently um at the PFA Awards he, I actually think his emergence has been brilliant for the quiet, humble player. He's not quite out there as the showy individual. And I think he realised when I said that to him, I said, you've been kind of, you kind of symbolise the victory for the underdog. Because this is his most prolific season and he's enjoying it. But you couldn't tell from his body language. <laughs> oh yeah, completely. Yeah. He's, he's loving it and, and, and rightly so. And I think that's also credit to Klopp, who has really implement into this squad the joy of playing, the joy of training, the joy of being together. And mm. I think Mane, by nature, I think, was always a bit like that. But although he's quite quiet, he certainly has that in him. And, and again, on Friday, he said, 
Next weekend, we're going to go out to Newcastle. We play first, so we can put pressure on City. Yeah. Which is a good thing, because then the last day of the season, everyone will be there at the same time. Yeah. We, and we're going to have fun and try to put pressure on them and then try to see where that takes us. Yeah, no, I agree completely. And obviously, what's been great with him as well is that little fallow period that, that Salah had. He, 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 he stepped filled, up. He filled that yeah. gap, didn't he? Yeah. What was interesting on Friday, I was at the game, is you, you almost got a sense of, obviously, they both got to 20 goals. And there was a little period where, where Mane was obviously then the top scorer. Yes. And Salah suddenly, yes. <laughs> suddenly just trying to score, and he scored again. And you think he's, he's trying to score. Yeah. And it's almost like they're having a little sort of contest yeah. between themselves. I put it to Sadio. Yeah. I said to him, there was a chance when Salah could have passed him. Yeah. And he refused to. Yeah. I said, did that register with you? He said, Yes, but we're all in it together. Yeah. So he was still trying to be the nice guy, even though there is clearly this competition between the yeah, two of them. He did look a little bit like that, yeah. And it's the same between Alexander Arnold and Robertson for the most assists yeah. this season. Correct. Because Robertson's on 10. 11 and, and 9. Yeah, 11 and 9 for now. For Trent. And then on Friday, we're there. Robertson obviously had that amazing cross for Manny's mm -hmm. header. And then Alexander Arnold had the through ball for Salah with the dink over the keeper, and then again in the second half, and it's, a, it's similar. And, but that's that competition who takes you to such a great team. Mm. It's because they all want to do so well to try better their, their mates who plays next to them or on the other side or the other wing. That's how you get to such a great team and such a great level. Yeah. What I'm also enjoying is the fact is the, the nationalities of that front three, they're also very different, aren't they? Because mm. you've got what, Egyptian, a Brazilian and a Senegalese kind of between them. Just, they're just brilliant, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. yeah completely. Yeah. They've been and fantastic. The way they've gelled as well in the last two seasons has been incredible. <laughs>